All right, this video is on spearfishing in Washington State. The tips on this video are primarily going to deal with spearfishing in general, best practices and standards, and then how I apply that to spearfishing here in Washington, along with strategies on getting your limit as quickly as possible uh, so that you can get out the water before your toes freeze. I will be using a three prong throughout the entirety of this video. I just want to give a warning that the three prong tip that I'm using is essentially a studded tip. It will allow you to hold fish onto the three prong a lot easier than your standard tips. This video is again about best practices, not necessarily where to find the best fish. I will be spearfishing out in the open and aiming for fish that are on top of rocks. Whereas if you hunt for fish in the rocks, you will also come across really good fish. But I'm too lazy for that. Rule number one. Yes, rule, not tip, is go all the way to the bottom. The only time you're not going to go all the way to the bottom for spearfishing is if you are pelagic spearfishing or if you have really good visibility and you're dive bombing a particular fish. The reason why this is important is you're going to want to use that bottom environment both for camouflage purposes as well as movement. And movement's really important because you only want to move at the same pace as the fish. You don't want to scare this fish off. You want to keep it around. You want to keep it curious. And this will give you the best opportunity for a good shot placement. And of course, good shot placement is critical in landing fish. Nobody wants to be losing fish while we're out here. You'll notice I am craning my neck down to look at the bottom as I dive. Usually this is something you don't want to be doing, but in this case, because I'm looking for the link cod sitting on top of the rocks or on top of any of the ledges, having that wider field of view on my way down is helpful. I'll notice rockfish as I'm looking for the link cod and I just kind of keep in mind, okay, there's a, there's a nice one over here. And if I don't find my, my link cod, I'm going to go for that rockfish in particular. It's really fuzzy, but you'll see this is a head-on shot. This rockfish is staring right at me. In general sense, this is a bad scenario. Reason being is this fish is focused on you. And as soon as you make a move, because all of its attention is on you, it's going to move very quickly. And you'll see I down near missed the shot. Now, if you don't stone your fish with a three prong, the next thing you're supposed to do is swim up to the fish, pin it against a rock, and get your hands on it. If you don't have a neural tip like I do, and you don't do this, the fish will come off of your three prong very easily. You'll see here I spot a link cod on my way down. And as I mentioned before, you don't want to have your attention on a fish while you're doing certain actions, which was me loading my three prong. You'll notice I don't immediately stone the link cod, so I push it over to a rock. And when you get to your larger fish like this, and it's a good holding shot, as long as you grab the other end of your three prong, the, the tip portion that is through the fish, there's no chance of it getting off. So it's a really good way to secure your catch on the way up. The next step is to stone the fish. For those of you who haven't done it before, this isn't gonna be a good shot of it, I do apologize, but you're going to essentially insert the knife into the brain of the fish. You're gonna feel it go stiff when you find that spot. And then you give it a twist, you'll feel the fish jerk. And when you pull the knife out, the fish will relax. I don't see any link cods in the area, and this doesn't look like the type of environment I would expect to find them in. So I switch over looking for rockfish pretty early on for this drop. This was the video footage from the rockfish cook-off we had. So I was particularly focused on rockfish for this trip. Try to take notice that I only move my three prong as fast as the fish are moving. This helps keep them calm so you can get that good shot. In this case, it wasn't a stone shot. I rushed in for the pin, but I saw that it was at least a good holding shot and I didn't need to actually pin it. One thing to keep in mind when you go to stone your fish is your hand placement in regards to where you're inserting the knife. 
you want to make sure you're not just applying a lot of pressure, especially if your hand is on the other side of the fish. I have gone through a fish and stabbed myself. So I'm very mindful about working that knife tip in. As mentioned before, I'm not hunting inside the holes today. One, because I'm lazy. And then two, I'm not using the right equipment for it. If I were to be hunting in holes, I would prefer to have a flashlight. I'd use my 65 spear gun with a flopper tip. Uh, with this pole spear being nine feet long and a three prong in itself, if I don't get a stone shot, the likelihood that that fish will come off the pole is very high. And losing fish is not a good thing to practice. So one thing you want to be mindful of when using a three prong and even a gun is not shooting rocks directly. Uh, we're going to have a shot come up here in a second and you're going to see it's a easy top down shot, but I'm also going to hit a rock. So I do swim a little further to angle myself so that when I hit the fish, I can push it into the open area and not dull my tips up against the rock. Luckily, I didn't spook this link cut when I first ran across him. Uh, the opportunity to load up the three prong and he hung around long enough to give me a good shot. But you'll see here that I didn't stone him and I in fact let him run to his hole. I had concern that if I was to just horse on the three prong as he ran away, he would have enough leverage to pull himself off the tip. So you'll see here as he's swimming along, I only move into him as quickly as he's moving. The fish will move as fast as you do. So if I rush at him, he's gonna rush away. Because I took the shot too early, the pole hit the rock behind the fish and I didn't get that great penetration, which is another reason why I need to let it run into the hole. I was initially going to pin the fish in the hole and then get my hand to the tips on the other side and pull it out. But when I went to reorientate the fish, it came out really easily. And I was able to just pull it straight out of the hole. While it may not be as much of a concern here in Washington, if you're in most other places spearfishing in a situation like this, if you don't pull that fish out of the hole immediately, you need to be very careful when you go back for that fish on your next drop. If you put your hand into that hole to grab the fish, with the amount of time that's passed, there could very likely be an eel in there about to grab that fish. So if you put your hand in a hole that has a bleeding, thrashing fish and an eel pops up, it could be a very bad day. So in cases like that, you want to be very careful. This guy's a little small, so I don't plan to take him, but I thought it'd be good for footage. Notice if I was to shoot this lingcod right where it's at, I'm not going to get very good penetration through the head, which will increase the chances that it could come off the three prong after the shot. So in this case, you see I'll spook it till it's in open water. And now the fish gives me an opportunity for a good shot. So I hope this video is helpful for those of you who are just starting off or thinking about picking up a three prong. Key points on this one, go to the bottom, look for your lingcods first, and then look for your rockfish. Keep an eye out for your cabazon as well. It's taken me a few years, but I finally willing to fillet the things in order to enjoy them. Take your time and only take a shot that you know is going to allow you to land the fish. As I mentioned before, I feel like Washington has some really good environments for you to build up foundations as far as spearfishing. Here, because the fish are so much calmer, you can really take your time to work on pacing, which is how quickly you approach a fish, reading a fish, and kind of get an idea for where it's going to turn, how quickly it's going to go, all allowing you to get that good placement shot. Thank you for watching. Dive safe out there.